which path will you choose? You know what I'm saying? You've been down both roads. Okay, so, you know, what journey are you going to keep walking? And that's, you know what I'm saying, off of the shelf. Whatever you heard of me ain't worthy to me. I'm just too cutthroat, verbal surgery. How you claim to know that stuff when your shelf's too high? I keep mines at eye level. What you trying to hide? <laughs>Peace, peace, peace, beautiful family. This is Dr. Walter Hidalgo, and this is the Know Thy Shelf podcast. The Know Thy Shelf podcast utilizes the metaphor of the shelf in order to extrapolate the self. And the way we do that is we invite people to come in and share something about themselves. And before I introduce my guests, um, as we always do, I'd like to give a, a big shout out to a few uh, sponsors slash family. Um, shout out to my brother Steve's 2020 collections. I've actually got his shirt right here. Definitely holla, holla at him. He got incense and, and, and dope stuff. Uh, definitely check out my brother Zanuj. Um, I'm actually wa- rocking some of his jewelry right now. Um, definitely holla at him. And if you're looking for any coaching any uh workshops for youth and young adults uh shoot me an email at know thy shelf tv at gmail.com I yo let me pardon me real quick as i sip on this <laughs> because the other thing we always do is i like to shout out a group of individuals And today, I want to give a big shout out to all the MCs. All the people who have been currently and recovering from and or recovering from being incarcerated. I want to give a big shout out to all my fathers out there. I also want to give a big shout out to anyone who searches for knowledge and wisdom like they do silver and gold. Because it's nothing more beautiful than knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. And a lot of that has to do with you got to know your history slash her story, family. I got somebody right here that I love, that I respect, that ain't... No stranger to the hip hop culture and beyond, my brother from another William Young. Yes. yes. <laughs> What's good, yes. King? Oh, we moving, we pushing. We're pushing, right? We're pushing. I, you know, I've known William for a minute. It's crazy. Um, you were the one that brought it up. You were like, "Yo, we've known each other for a minute," yeah. and yeah. like. Like most people that, I, that I've met in this world family, uh, I met Young through the hip-hop circuit, the world, you know what I mean? The culture, uh, the New York hip-hop scene, you know what I'm saying? Right. Um, but before we get deep into that, you know what I'm saying, um, as I always do, I like, to, I like for us to step back and go into Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. And go back in time, right? Super throwback, right? Super throwback. <laughs> and if we were to go back to a, a young er young, <laughs> um, what would we see? What would we hear? Um, because this ain't no different than the 73 joint. So you are originally from? Brooklyn. Brooklyn, stand yeah. up. What's good? Talk to yeah. us about you growing up in Brooklyn. Um, it was... <laughs> It was an experience, man. Right? You know, it was like um, just different, different pieces of, of, a, of a big puzzle, man. And you know, it's like as you go into adulthood, you just start realizing, like, wow, you know, it's it's, it's crazy how you know certain environments bring about certain characteristics within your own self. Mm. So it's like you know. Mm-hmm. When you ask me the question from my adult mind, I start 
try to pinpoint, okay, when is, you know what I'm saying? Like, when is he targeting? Because, like, growing up in Brooklyn, for me, it was, it was different depending on where I was at. And age, depending on where I was at, and the environment, because I was, you know, I was in East New York predominantly, but I was also best out. I also lived in Bushwick. So it's just like, you know, okay, when you go here, it's all, you, know, you gotta readapt. You know what I'm right. saying? When you come here, you gotta adapt again. And now you, you know, you're getting exposed to a different piece of the same fabric. And it's like, oh, okay, now I gotta move like this. Or, you know, and then you start building relationships as you grow older. And it's like, oh, you know, well, my last neighborhood was full of my old friends. Mm -hmm. So, but but now it becomes a pilgrimage. So you're going from your from your new neighborhood to your old neighborhood. And as the journey continues, you keep adding pieces to the puzzle and meeting different characters and personalities, and it just starts just adding on to who you are. So yeah, I think that's dope, man. I'm glad you brought that up because when we we sometimes just have um, much like New York City is always get the uh, the shine uh, they shine their light on, on Times Square but we're like that's not all New York right. is right no and similarly uh, on, on a borough level Brooklyn is like first of all it's the most populated borough out of all the five boroughs you know what I'm saying and it's so diverse the different enclaves that exist yeah. within this so meaning you can cross from one threshold to the other right. and you like in a, you in La La Land and you right. were just in Humble Land over real there quick. you know <laughs> real quick so um, how has you know because so many notable MCs and artists and from the culture has come out of hip hop, uh, Brooklyn, you yeah. know what I'm saying, from the culture. Right. And and you've worked with a lot of notable people, like uh, K. Slay and, uh, who, you know, right. not not from Brooklyn, but, you not know, family. Brooklyn, but definitely notable. He you, you're already Papoose, <laughs> part of the, Papoose, the BK Papoose. family, and, yeah. and so many other notable artists. Yeah. Um, what continues to give you that drive, young? It's just the passion, man, just the passion that drive is just is there, <clears throat> you know, and um, just seeing other people's stories and, you know, pulling pieces from their successes and failures. So sometimes mm -hmm. the drive is based off of someone else's success. Sometimes the drive is based off of someone else's failure. Like, oh, this was their mistake. So this is what not to do for, for, for my journey. And you know, so it, it all depends on the situation. Yeah, super fast. Yeah, weeded out. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. What's what's the uh, what's the role of the MC in hip hop? Mm. The pathfinder. Mm. Mm. I would say the MC is the pathfinder. You know what I'm saying? Because you know, they creating a route. You know what I'm mm. saying? For other people to follow. You know what I'm saying? So you know. For me, it's always been important as to like, yo, what's your message? Like, what are you bringing to the table? And you know, in today's hip hop, it's more like, yo, bro, you're giving us the same route over and over. Mm, and it speak on it. It, it ain't, it, you know, it's not working like that. You know, because we ain't in a better condition. So it's like, you know, what's the purpose? Like, you know what I'm saying? So you know, I would look at the MC's role as like the path. Pathfinder. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we ain't talking about the car, right? Yeah, I'm bugging <laughs> with you. But I think it's so important that um, I'm glad that you said the Pathfinder mm. because, you know, um, for me, I, I think the MC is, is no different than the teacher, than the attorney, than any orator or public speaker that is disseminating information, um, you know? So, um, what's your message to? It's funny you say that. <laughs> um, you know, um, as far as um, a MC, a, a MC for me, you know, and in my travels in life, and you know, being fortunate enough to come across certain insightful people, you know what I'm saying, that that sparked me in different ways throughout my life um 
the MC is like the the gatekeeper of language so it's like mm. you know a lot of people don't realize like yo you taking this for granted man like you know what I'm saying like basically you are the, the custodian of language you know what I'm saying and you know how you use it and who you pass it on to is you know is important man because mm. it impacts you know everyone from your your block to mm, a facts. whole nother country you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. so you know it's, it's, it's crazy man and I'm big on the foundation it's mm. like yo you know like man, uh, who was it um, K Solo back in the day had the letter man yeah 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 so it's like you know yes. um, I always take it there to the beginning cause letters you know is the root of everything man and when you understand have mastery over something as simple as the alphabet that'll take you to a whole nother place man you know what i'm saying so you know for me the mc is like the custodian of a language you know what i'm saying Word. and the pathfinder of the people you know what i'm saying mm, speak on it i think um a lot of what you talked about and mentioned um speaks to um, a, one way that me and you connected is you know the, um, is learning your history because the MC got to do its due diligence right. you know and it's it's like everything else you know like um, we, we, we get inspired by other people our environment yeah. and sometimes you can't take that flight to to Russia or like you can't go back to the samurai time, but you heard of them. Right. So you pick up the book and do the knowledge, right. you know? Um, or you travel there mentally. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Can't where, go there physically, but I can go there mentally. Exactly. Where's this Where's this passion come from? Because I feel like, you know, I be telling my young people, like yeah. much like everything else, like science, but history is so important because it's the only yeah. way we'll know, you know, where we're going. Very important. Um, it's, 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 it's hard, man, you know, like, to, to, like, really pinpoint it, because it's sort of like, it's sort of like, you know, you develop a passion for different things, right, and, um, each passion could be created, or, or the seed could have been planted by someone different in your life, mm -hmm. so, <clears throat> You know, it, it's all about the end result. So it's like, I, right, you know, this came from this person, but this came from this person, or this idea, or this book I read, or this. This was the beginning of the journey. So it's like, <clears throat> you know, when I get asked certain questions, you know, I tend to give an answer that best exemplifies the experience in its totality because it's like there's many layers to it mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying so the passion is the umbrella of many little passions that build that one big ball of flame and each contribution is coming from different resources so right you know I mean? yeah I mean that's how I tend to look at it you know what I mean? yeah and I think one of the mm. things that I want to pick your brain about both <clears throat> historically and even up until this point is um, you're, you're very vocal about you know being incarcerated and right. spending that time and you right. even like show it visually in some cases when the lyrics right. you make reference to it right. um, police reform right. you know even though the conversation died out on a, on a yeah. but not really right, right and, and right. we've seen black lives matter right. um you know what's your thoughts on that young you know as someone that has you know been uh, in <clears throat> in and outside of those four walls well I, I speak on it a lot um through music um and even you know when I'm talking in private, you know? Um, and the reason is um, is because it um, it affected me. And it's, 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 it's a real 
is real on so many different levels because you know, you, you know, I was physically incarcerated, mm. but you got mentally incarcerated too. You <laughs> Yo, know what I'm saying? So speak on it. So it's like you know when you deal with that. Um, again, man, you know I was fortunate enough to have great teachers mm. in my travels. Um, you know I made mistakes through my journey, but you know sometimes I got the answer after the seed was planted. So you know that was cool too. You know what I'm Word. saying? It was getting fertilized. Mm. Right, you know what I mean? right. Yep. So you know yep. I didn't get it when they gave it to me. It needed time to grow, mm -hmm. but I wound up getting it. Where some people don't have that opportunity or they don't have that level of comprehension to be Facts. able to even get it. They just Facts. miss the whole the whole jewel that was right. that was given to them. Right. But my passion for that really comes from understanding, and it's like you know understanding the different layers and understanding the monster that we're up against. You know what I'm saying? So it's like you know you have um. You have I look at prison like religion. Mm. So, you know, mm. um you have let's say Christianity, you have Islam, you have Buddhism, Hinduism, um, you know, you have like the the African mysteries, you know what I'm saying? You got um Masonry, you you know, which is not religion, but you know, the tenets are still there. Right, right. But so, you know, all of them is like running neck and neck with prison in terms of their principles. So, mm. you know, mm. prison to me mm. is the rites of passage. You know what I'm saying? And it's like a lot of people don't realize that. They don't they don't get it. So it's like, you know, <clears throat> like let's say in um in the realm of um let's say Santeria, right? Yeah. Um, you know, you have an initiate, an initiate comes in. And this is really with everything, you know what I'm saying? This is Christianity, you know, the initiate, you know, they come, you know what I'm saying? Um, as a newborn, they get the, sh the head shaved, you know what I'm saying? They, 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 um, and even in the 5% culture, you know, not all of the, the principles, but some of them, you know what I'm saying? You go through the rites of passage or initiation. So, you know, you get to, you get the head shaved or you get the, um, you get a new attribute right. that reflects who you are. Um, uh, 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 um, in the, in the African mysteries, you'll be, um, given, uh, uh, um, the obligation to wear white for a certain duration of time, you know what I'm saying? So your uniform changes, um, and you're supposed to be, you know, um, uh, uh, um, sacrificing the old you for the new you, mm. right? So <clears throat> in prison, the same ceremony takes place. The same mm. ritual takes place, you know what I'm saying? So you go from a civilian to a prisoner. So now when when you become incarcerated um, and you, you, you know, you get convicted, right? You become initiated into the institution of slavery, right? But what kind of slave will you become? You know what I'm saying? Mm. And what mm. will you be a slave mm -hmm. to? You know what I'm saying? So now um, when you get convicted, they take you from your county facility and you, 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 you begin your journey upstate, you know, or well, whatever state you're in, you mm -hmm. begin that journey upstate. So once you get to that new facility or that reception area for the, the, um, the state facility, now, you know, they bathe you and give you a shower and shave your head, you know what I'm saying? Boom. They do all of the same tenants that are given to you in religion. Then they remove your name and they replace it with a number. <laughs> this becomes the new you, right? And then from there, you get a new, a new set of clothing to wear, mm -hmm. right? Um, so your clothing becomes your uniform or this becomes mm -hmm. the new personality or the new character that you're about to embrace and the new journey you're gonna embark on, you know what I'm saying? And then you get, you know, you get transported from facility to facility, you know what I'm saying? But it all still deals with, you know, ceremony mm. and, and ritual. This is the ritual. So, I ask yourself, yo, you know, what am I going to be a slave to? And, you know what I'm saying? Like, do I really want this for myself? 
So, you know, that's why I tend to, you know what I'm saying, yeah. focus on it so much and I be passionate because my thing is that a lot of people don't realize that they're being tricked or being forced into this, this, um, you know, tribal religion, you know what mm, I'm saying, mm. that they call prison, you know what I'm saying, or church, you know what I'm saying? S <clears throat> speak on it. So, you know, it, it's like, I, I know, I'm awake, you know what I'm saying, I'm conscious. So it's like, it irks me, you know what I'm saying, like, yo, and I always, you know, deal with the bros and, you know what I'm saying, try to lift them up, like, yo, listen, man, this is serious, man, you know what I'm saying, like, you, whether you realize it or not, bro, like, they casting spells on you. <laughs> yo, you know what I'm like, that's yo, crazy. They yep. spell casting on you, you know, this is religion, bro, this is not, you know, they tend to go towards the, you know, like the people who may feel that they're awake. They tend to get lost in prison as a business. Mm. And you know, so you got the woke crowd that like, they they concentrate on that aspect of the process so much that they negate the fact that, no, this is religion, bro. This and, is religion. And it's crazy cause um, I'm, I'm I always think about that line that Jay-Z said, um, you know, trap my body but can't trap my mind. Mm. And 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 it's like you yo you you totally like <laughs> pause for a second because you just dropped a big gem on me and to think about it in that way because you know what's another beautiful and ugly yin yang beautiful ugly thing is the fact that Pretty much every spiritual person has spent some time in prison, y'all. Mm. Sit on that real quick. Literally, physically, or Dr. King, prison. Jesus, right. prison. Right. You know what I mean? And it's 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 the initiation process that you right. said. Um, and I'm, I'm, it's bugging me out because it may speak to why we've seen a rise of depression, suicide, um, around this COVID time because a lot of people were incarcerated in their homes, you know? mm. And they probably didn't know how to maneuver that right. real quick. And that's what you, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling like right. I had to say that right. real quick. Right. Cause, and they're not used to that. They're yeah. They're used to like, yo, know, that discipline. Mm. Which was another thing, you know, that I, I, I was able to see, you know, through the prison system is that a lot of, a lot of people didn't have discipline. Mm. So it's like now you're being forced into a habit that you don't have. Mm. Mm -hmm. and, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? They're gonna keep drilling it in you until you know you pick up on this habit, and it is it, gonna keep coming either by force. So either you're gonna get disciplined in this habit, or you're gonna be savage. Mm. One of the two. You're gonna totally deny and reject it like this man I'm not not conforming so you you go the other way so it's you it's one or the other it's one or the other by, by the time this comes out this will be old news but it, it's still gonna cause a chain reaction the god the young god Bobby Shmurda just just got released right um what's 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 an advice or message you can give to that young person uh, out there who is uh, either in their way in or their way out. Oh, man. It, it sort of connects to what, you know, what we were just touching on. So it's like, if you're on your way in, then it's like, you know, know that you've just been initiated into a, a, a whole new world. You know what I'm saying? You've been initiated into this this cult. So and but, you know, it's slavery. So it's like, you know, while you're there, focus on, you know, what are you gonna be a slave to? And are you gonna be a slave or are you gonna be a free bondman? You know what I'm saying? Like you know, it's about 
your your mental journey more than anything. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it's like for the young person, it's like, yo, this is the reality right now. It ain't. You know what I'm saying? Like we touched on the 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 clothing and you know of the different religions. So like, let's say um, in in um, in on the African mysteries, right? So they dressed them in white for a, 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 like a year, right? Now, 90, probably 99.9% of people that's doing this ritual, they don't know what it's about. They hmm. just do it, but they're hmm. never taught why they're doing it. But the reason that they're wearing the white is because they're burying their own self. So the white is symbolic of a mummification, right? Mm-hmm. So you're being mummified symbolically, right? And it's seeing that the old you is dead and the new you is risen. Now, in the prison system, what they do is they give you earth colors, right? Mm. And the facility staff has sky colors, right? So the symbolic message being being given to you is that we'll always be above you. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Or we are your God. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So mm-hmm. the staff wears blue or, you know, the higher ranking ones, white shirts, gray pants or blue pants, like, but sky colors. And, you know, as far as New York is concerned, either if you sentence you wear either beige mm-hmm. or you wear them green. Mm-hmm. Stay green, you know what I'm saying? So everything, you know, is put there for a symbolic reason. And it's like, you know, if you don't pay attention, you will be a slave to something that you don't want to be. Mm-hmm. You know yeah. What I'm saying? And I think one of the guiding lights, because I want to bring it back to this real quick, um, and, 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 and that's hip hop, but. The way we connected was through uh, the windows of hip hop. Right. You know, shout out and shout out to Melissa too. Um, word, yeah, and shout out to the um, the hip hop museum in the Bronx. That you know, because that that's what we are. And 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 one thing I knew you are that connected and binded us is hip hop entrepreneurship. Mm. Being an entrepreneur, what what what's an entrepreneur, yo? Is someone who's not enslaved. You know ba- go Speak back. on it. Everything got 360. Yeah, yes, yes, go, yes, go yes. Back to not allowing yourself to be enslaved. So it's the the free thinker, mm. and and it's about using your freedom and expressing that in, mm. in its mm-hmm. highest form. You know what I'm saying? Until Speak you speak on it. it. Your, the goal that you set yourself out for, mm-hmm, you know what I'm mm-hmm, saying? So, mm-hmm. goes back to the same thing. Mm-hmm. The same principles apply. So, you know. But the, it's, it's part of the journey that we say. It's, it's up and downs. You know what I'm saying? And, and I think That's someone it. said, I forget, um, it might have been the I Am Athlete podcast, uh, the more, um, the more notice you get, the more network. The, the, the more your net worth expands, you know. Right. So no uh, uh, exposure is, is 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 what helps build your brand, mm. and, and, and I think that's what I see happening um, because you continue to, to hustle and build. Um, talk to us some of the stuff that you're working on, young, right now, and where people can reach you. Uh, well, right now I'm working on a couple of things. So I got the uh, I got the Man on Fire album coming. Word, yeah. Um, and um, and I also have um, an album with uh, DR Period, great oh. producer. Shout out DR Period. Shout out. I got I got a, um, a good, great, solid album coming with him. You know what I'm saying? So that's it's two albums on the way. And um, I got a, another like, two about two books that I personally wrote. Um, that's gonna be dropping soon. One of them is uh, Confessions of a Pervert, which is like a spoof. <laughs> yeah, it's like yeah. a spoof, yeah. Um, and then um, I got the um, the uh, 
Tricky Chippies, which is another one that I did. Um, so you know, I got I got the literature going and yeah. I got the the music going. You know what I'm saying? And you know, it's, and I'm glad because there I go. I had a brain fart. <laughs> Why the hell did I forget that my brother right here is a published author? Yeah, you know I mean, and we part of that family too. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Because yeah, I got my book too. Yeah. Shameless plug: Beyond the Four Walls, The Rise of Ministry and Spirituality of Hip Hop. You also got the Con Joint, the Gorilla Con yeah, Joint, yo. Con. We and we talked about that before, um, and previously with seventy three. What's right. what's a Gorilla Con, man? What's this about, yo? Just in case people are living in a, under a rock, can you please let <laughs> them know about the movement? Yeah, well, um, Gorilla Con was my first. Um, publication so um you know that was um basically like a title i created not not, not in the terms of a title of a book but like let's say a title like godfather mm -hmm. so it's like you know um gorilla khan is equivalent to like you know a mafioso godfather mm -hmm. it was mm -hmm. you know sort of gorilla is you know the the on the streets, he's the muscle. He's the, you know, the unbeatable, the unbreakable. Mm -hmm. And then a Khan is a chief or a king or a leader. So, you know, it, it to be titled or crowned Gorilla Khan is like, yo, this is the chief or the, the, the apex of gorillas. So if you think you're about that, then, you know, you come across this dude in the book, you're like, <laughs> whoa. Like, <laughs> Yeah, he's turned up. So that's what Gorilla Khan was about. And I kind of like, you know, I infused um, my Latin background mm. inside of the book. Um, so I kind of like, you know, I I, I interweave um, the street elements. So um, it was like urban, regular hood, like drama, mm -hmm. but on a, on a big level you know, fused with like a Spanish mafia that I kind of created inside of the book, you know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. then they eventually clash for over turf war, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's that's what Gorilla Khan is, basically. And that's dope because it, it just, it, it, it speaks to the different elements that, that um, you know, characterize who you are, you know what I'm yeah, saying? No Historian, artist, MC. <laughs> But you know what we want to know is um, what's coming out of your shelf, homie. As I, <laughs> as we always do, we ask guests to bring something that comes out of their shelf. Um, right. What you got for us, King? Oh man, it's kind of, it's kind of funny. It's funny, right? How how everything comes full circle, right? So what what's out of my shelf is two identifications, right? One is my prison ID. Right, mm. and the other one is my college ID, right? Mm -hmm. Before I went to prison, right? So these are two, wow, two IDs that I still journey with, and I journey with them, you know, <laughs> as a constant reminder yep. of the duality of self. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So it's like you know, on one end you got prison and the hard knock life, and then on the other hand, you know, I was striving for the betterment of self and I was in college and I was, you know, I was treading that path. So here we is flash forward to where I'm at now and I walk with these IDs on me as a reminder of, you know, which path will you choose? You know what I'm saying? You've been down both roads. Okay, so, you know, what journey are you going to keep walking and that's you know what i'm saying off of the shelf yeah uh, yo <laughs> let me tell you something you know what yo um pardon me man i guess yeah. you know you're a father i'm a father and yes, i think my sir. daughter made me a super emotional dude and i got a little emotional with that man yeah. because that is <laughs> so this is what i'm talking about because let me tell you something man I'll never forget, uh, my mom said this to me one time when I was in a real uh, tough time in my life. Mm -hmm. And Dr. West says this all the time, shout out Cornell West. You know, every single day we're dying, man, mm -hmm. in order to live, man. Right. Like, what I'm talking about is, you gotta kill the ego, 
you gotta kill the prejudice, kill the assumptions, because when you strip and strip and strip away, you go through that initiation. It's called prison, yo. Super facts. <laughs> yo, as we always do in the Know That Show podcast, we end with a quote. And how fitting, right? Um, and it comes from our man, Benjamin Franklin, because, you know, we're all about the Benjamin. It's not just in a physical, but, you know, money got spirituality and energy associated, too. But that's for other conversation. This quote reads as such. An investment in knowledge <laughs> pays the best interest. Mm. Peace, family. Yeah. <laughs> Bomb, Brooklyn. The truth is, my enemies can't stand me. I make it rain, nigga, Hurricane Sandy. In these streets, I'm giving them all murder. Look at that cylinder spinning on that burner. You see them shittles I'm running with their harlots. And they won't hesitate to run in your apartment. In my hood, they ain't tryna play around. My niggas are going to lay you down. I gotta bring it back to the above You the type of nigga say practically in love Picture me let a lame nigga clap at me with slugs Knowing my whole area's a faculty of thugs My team's hellfire, I call them a doom squad I've been in so many cells, I could be a neutron Man, I'm stupid with the eight So if you get out of place, I ain't gotta be Dick Cheney To shoot you in the face like dope Then put a center in your bloodstream Your hearing's impaired, but you're hearing your son scream Your heart's beating fast like an African drum You breathe, but the bullets keep Attacking your lungs, you're seeing your light flash. The lights getting dark. The doves start crying just like Central Park. My mic's so hot, static to melt you. Breathe in, little nigga, you can smell the sulfur.